Well, hey everybody, this is Buddy. Uh, I seen this sign, hate a, I think it's prolonged, ED, prolonged form of suicide. We're supposed to hate that. Huh. Well, I grew up in the Bible Belt. And these uh, Bible Belt type people mentality have their way of seeing and thinking. And uh, I'm not saying I disagree with with what he's saying, but uh, I see it from a whole nother point of view, another perspective. And then on this side, we got nursing a grudge will never make it better. No, it takes forgiveness. You gotta forgive yourself before you can forgive those that grudged against you and then those ones that put you in a state of having to nurse something um, that means you're thinking about it and so it'll never get better yeah it'll get better it'll get better as soon as you personally want it to be better and you change the way you see it and stop being the victim of anything or anyone because in reality, the only thing that could ever hurt us is our thoughts. And I know all of us, we've all been hurt by something or someone, a situation, something that doesn't even have any reality in this reality. It's like, it's the weirdest thing. I learned it the hard way. See, I was at the point of killing myself literally dying to myself i went out of my mind and i was awakened into a, a place where i'm not a victim never have been never could be and i knew that i had to forgive intuitively i forgave myself and everybody that i seen had any part of my pain here comes a bike rider Hey, bike rider! What's up? I got you on camera, man. You're looking good. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Yeah. So one of the things is, is when I talk about my crying for help and so-called suicide attempt, it was really more, more or less a, a cry for help. But uh, it had happened to me at 19 and a half and at 28, and then August the 17th, 2003. That was the night I reached the end of me. I've told this story before, but it's really not easy to tell because how do you instantly come into a still mind and peace after being depressed for over a whole calendar year or more. I don't know how many, it was almost like two years of insanity and pain and, and just crazy, crazy thoughts and thinking. And just not knowing who I was or what I was here for. I still question myself about who am I and why I'm here. But I do know one thing. I could have left. In a way, I, in a way, I might have. I might have left. Some people say I'm a walk-in, and I'm not saying I am. I'm just saying that this body had all the pain and the mental t turmoil that it could handle. So it's like that man went up in that tree to get that that raccoon down. He said, "Lord, help us. Somebody's got to have some relief up in here." Hey, bike rider! And I, and I, that's what I did. I said, hey, Lord, somebody's got to have some help up in here. I can't do it by myself. I can't do it with my mind. I can't do it with not knowing. And so, as I'm, Literally fixing to bear down on the trigger of a 357 Magnum pointed at my head. 
A word came out of my chest. It was grace. It stopped me dead in my tracks. I said the first prayer I ever said. Now, I've never said this on video, but I'll tell you what the prayer was. It was, Father, please take these thoughts of suicide, depression, anxiety out of me. I haven't slept in nine months, more than three or four hours, and I keep waking up with these worms crawling through my mind. Help me. I need help. Well, the next day I wake up, I pull myself off of the bed. I recognize the time on my watch. And I realize, I, I, at that point, I didn't even know what month it was, what year it was. I didn't even really recognize the room until I seen the items in the room. And then I realized the night before, from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning, I had been crying out, screaming, begging for the pain to go away. And do you know, I could not even feel what I was angry about for all that emotion or what it felt like to have that feeling because instantly I realized that my mind was completely still. I had to go in to my heart and feel what it could have been that I was the day before because I had no clue of what that pain felt like unless I tried to go in and tap into it one more time. One time just to see, just to see was what I was feeling in my mind was real. And I said, oh my God, God is real. And every cell in my body vibrated and changed. And I ain't been the same since. A smile came on my face, my mind was clear. It was still, I instantly understood how to meditate, how to calm myself down. And I started meeting these Christ conscious beings. Emily Limley was the first and she introduced me to Tupelo Joe, Joe Turner. Uh, I'm gonna cut it off here and tell you those stories about Emily Limley and Tupelo Joe, how we went on the road. They were both evangelists and been off the road for about 10 years. And they were in there. Joe was in his 90s and Emily was 87 when I got with her. I met her day two after my awakening in, in the night. Day two I met her. So I'll tell that story later. All right. Thank you for watching my channel. Hit that like button and subscribe. Appreciate it.